Okay, so anyone with basic algebra skills should be able to solve this problem pretty easily. And here is the question. So we have this line, this linear equation, and that is 4x plus 3y is equal to negative 12. Of course, this is the linear equation, and this is the graph, i.e. the line, that is represented by this linear equation. Now you can see here that this line is going to intercept the y-axis right here and the x-axis right here. So these locations are called the, uh, this is called the x-intercept and this location right here is called the y-intercept. So what we're trying to do in this problem is figure out these exact points. All right, now if you think you know how to solve this, go ahead and put your answer into the comments section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to thoroughly explain how to find the x and y intercepts of a linear equation. This is very uh, important when it comes to algebra. You have to know a lot about linear equations, i.e. the equations of lines. All right, so let's go and take a look at the right answer right now. Okay, so here is the uh, line, uh, 4x plus 3y is equal to negative 12, or this linear equation, an equation for a line. Here is the graph in green. Here's a nice little xy um, plane. And by the way, we're just looking for a sketch. It doesn't have to be a perfect graph. So your, if your graph is a little bit different, but basically has this um, you know, general angle, here are the intercepts. Okay, so our first right here, our y, this is the y-axis right here, is uh, located at 0, negative 4. Okay, that is the y-intercept. And our x-intercept right here is located at negative 3, 0. Okay, so how did you do? Were you able to graph this line? Were you able to identify uh, the x-y-intercepts? Well, if you were, if you were like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, this problem wasn't that difficult. You know, work on making more advanced problems. Well, listen, some of you got this right and some of you didn't and need to review this. But for those of you who knew this stuff, let me reward you with a nice little happy face in A+, plus, a 100%, and a few stars so you can have an extra special day. A nice job, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, talk about uh, kind of what the topic is, and that is graphing lines in algebra, okay? And this is kind of like, again, pre-algebra, first-year algebra stuff. But let's uh, first start off by uh, looking at the situation, okay? Here is an equation, okay? This is a linear equation. And this equation has two variables, x and y. So we would call this or describe this as a two-variable linear equation, okay? Two-variable linear equation. That's a good kind of description of this. Uh, it's an equation of a line, okay? Now, these aren't the only type of linear equations that you uh, learn how to graph. We have more basic ones, okay? We have x equals a number and y equals a number. This is a one variable linear equation. Let's just kind of quickly review this. It's so easy, uh, but a lot of students um, uh, confuse this. So here, for example, if I have y is equal to two, this is a one variable, not a two variable, okay? This is just y by itself. y is equal to two would be a horizontal line going through two on the y-axis, okay? So that's what that line would look like. If I wanted to graph the line x is equal to 3, again, that's a one variable linear equation. That's a vertical line going through 3 on the x-axis, okay? So when you're uh, first learning how to graph lines in algebra, you first start off by one variable lines, okay? And super easy, but here's the deal with uh, these two lines right here. So many students forget uh, they're like, which, uh, which one is which? Is uh, this vertical? Is this horizontal? They confuse these two. So again, you know, even with this basic stuff, you want to really, you know, review it and do a lot of practice problems so you don't forget. Okay, so that's a one variable linear equation kind of setup. So, but again, we're talking about two, a two variable situation. So what's that about? Well, anytime you have a two variable linear equation, this is where you're going to have uh, lines that have some sort of angle to them, things like this, right, or like this. So lines that increase from left to right that go uphill this way are going to have a positive slope. Lines that go downhill from left to right are going to have a negative slope. Lines that are horizontal like this have no slope, and lines that are perfectly vertical 
it, that slope is what we call undefined. Now, I'm not going to get into slope. And if you need to, um, you know, if you want, you know, more information about all this stuff, well, you should want more information about this, especially if you're taking algebra. Let me give you a couple uh, quick uh, recommendations before we continue. One, I do have a lot of additional videos on graphing lines, slope, etc., on my YouTube channel. I have a lot of videos there. But my more, uh, like, formal instruction and whatnot, I would suggest checking out, like, my pre-algebra or Algebra 1 course. If you happen to be in Algebra 2, I teach that in uh in that course as well. Okay, so that's just a quick kind of setup of what we're trying to do. We're trying to graph a line. It's two variable line, and I already showed you the answer. It's going to have some sort of a downhill scenario like this, but this is kind of the big picture. So how can we graph two variable lines? I already showed you how we graph one variable line. It's super easy, okay? Uh, but how do we graph two variable lines? So to graph two variable lines, and um, like an equation like this, a linear equation with both x and y, well, we have a couple options, right? One thing we could do is to rewrite this equation in what we call slope-intercept form, all right? So I can rewrite this thing, shuffle the variables around, and put it into y equals mx plus b form, and then it would be super easy to graph this thing, all right? Now, that's not always, uh, if a line is in this form, that's exactly how you want to uh, graph it, okay? This line is not in this form. This linear equation is not in this form. I could rewrite it into this form and graph it, okay? But that's not what we want to do. This line happens to be in what we call standard form, all right? Standard form, and this is really... Um, important because we have some nice easy ways to graph lines in standard form. But let's just look at our options here to graph this line. Another thing we could do is construct a nice table of values, okay? And then lastly, we can use the xy intercepts to graph this line as well. Now, anytime you have a line in standard form, and basically what standard form is, is where you have x and y on one side of the equation. It's equal to some number, and all these numbers are integer values, okay? When you have that scenario, like something like this, you want to go ahead and use the xy intercepts. And um, basically, the technique to uh, use xy intercepts is basically like uh, using the table of values, but it's like the easiest little table of values that you can use. So, uh, but anyways, this is basically the techniques you can use to solve a uh, two variable linear equation. And again, we're going to uh, graph this or not solve uh, graph. Uh, and uh, you're oftentimes going to be asked when you graph a line, Hey, what are the intercepts? Okay. This line right here will only give you the Y intercept. Okay. This uh, technique right here, uh, may not give you any intercepts unless you put this information in. It's a really good idea to know your x, y intercepts. But let's go ahead and get into the actual mechanics now to solve this problem. All right. Now, before we continue on, I have a quick question for you. Are you enjoying this content? Well, if you are, please consider hitting that subscribe button. This really does help me out on YouTube. And if you're going to do that, hit that bell notification as well. I will definitely uh, appreciate that. Also, if you need additional help in math, check out my math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. Also, I'm going to give you uh, some specific recommendations at the end of this video. All right, so let's get back to the problem. So here's what you need to do, all right? So um, I like to set up a table like so. There's a couple of different ways um, this could be taught. I like to use the, um, a table method because most students are familiar with tables. So here's a basic x, y table of values. I could put any value in here for x and then plug in this x value into our equation, solve for y, and get a respective y value out. Um, I could put any value. I could put one, two, three, four. It doesn't make a difference, but if you've never seen a table of how it works, you're going to see you're going to see exactly how this works right now. But here is the table we want to complete. We want to fill out this table, okay? Meaning that we have a zero here. I need to get a piece of information for y, okay? When x is zero, what is y? We got to figure that out. And when y is zero, what is x? So all we have to do is get these two pieces of information, and I have everything I need to answer this question, okay? So how does this work? Well, what, again, when you're solving or when you uh, want to find x, y intercepts, just make yourself a little x, y table, put a zero for x and a zero for y, okay? This is the, <laughs> this is the way I like to kind of teach it. Little table, zero, zero, 
Now we need to go ahead and figure out what this is and this is. So let's go ahead and first start uh, off by figuring out what y is equal to when x is equal to zero. Okay, so when x is equal, x is equal to zero, what is y? Well, pretty easy uh, to figure this out. All we need to do is plop in a zero for x. Okay, so let's go ahead and put in a zero for x and then uh, solve for y. So when I do that, you can see uh, that right there. So four times zero is what? That's zero. I don't even have to write the answer there. I don't have to put a zero. Four times zero is zero. So that means I'm left with this nice little equation right here. 3y is equal to negative um, uh, 12. And then just go to divide both sides of the equation by 3. I get y is equal to negative 4. So I'm going to plug in a negative 4 right there. And you can see I already did the work. But what does this mean? Okay. Well, this little, uh, these numbers right here, this x and y, this x, these x, y's, or this is points on the x, y plane. Okay. This is a coordinate. All right. So uh, x, y, this, uh, when x is 0, y is negative 4. This point, 0, negative 4, is on this line, okay? And it's, it, it is, in fact, a intercept. We'll answer that question here in just one second. Of course, I told you the answer, but we'll talk more about uh, the intercepts here just for a second. So let's go ahead and figure out the rest of the table and figure out what x is equal to when y is 0. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this down here. Okay, so we already figured out what um, y, y was negative 4 when x is 0. All right, so we got that coordinate right there. So uh, what is x when y is 0? So we're going to replace this y right here with 0. Okay, basically um, what I did with x, but that's the time we're going to be doing it with y. So this is going to leave us with 4x plus 3 times 0 is 0. So that leaves us with the equation 4x is equal to negative 12 or x is equal to negative 3. So we're going to plug that in right there. So now we have two coordinates, okay? So how many points do we need to graph a line? Well, if I have a point here and another point there, that is enough to graph the line. You only need two points to graph a line. And here we have two points or two ordered pair, two coordinates. There's a lot of different ways to say the same thing. Okay, so here we go. Let me go ahead and erase this so we can focus in on the work now, the kind of pulling this all together. So here's our table of values. And, uh, uh, and well, let me just, I'll speak about tables here in a second, but here are our two coordinates that we figured out, okay? Here is this linear equation I'm trying to graph. So let's go ahead and first plot this point, zero, negative four, okay? X is uh, zero, Y is negative four. So X is zero, here's at the origin. So Y is negative four is uh, one, two, three, four. There's negative four. So just plot that point, that's zero, negative four. Now let's go ahead and plot this second point. We'll talk about intercepts here in a second. So negative three, zero is right here. One, two, three. Remember, this is X, this is Y. So that's negative three, zero. So now we just draw our line and now we have the graph of the line, but we need the intercepts. So what are the intercepts? Well, when a line uh, is plotted on X, Y plane, that line is gonna plot through, unless it's going through the origin, the X and Y axis. So let's first take a look at the Y axis, this axis right here. Where is the point where this line crosses the Y axis, intercepts the Y axis? It's this point. So this would be labeled as the Y intercept. And then this line right here is crossing the X axis at this point, negative three, zero. So this is the X intercept. Okay. So this is how you graph linear equations uh, using um, a nice little table of values, the zero, zero table to find the X and Y intercepts. But I wanted to uh, um, tell you here real quick, let's just erase this. Okay. Could we graph this line uh, using a table of values? Of course we can. It's not, um, you know, ideal, but if you, you could put in like numbers like negative two, negative one, zero, uh, one, uh, three, and then we could do the same thing. We could plug in these values in for X, solve for Y. We just do all this algebra and we get all these coordinates. And then basically we would just, you know, plot all these points and it would form this nice, lovely line as long as you did all the algebra correctly. Uh, correct. But this is a lot of extra work because remember, how many points do you need to graph a line? You just simply need two points here and here. Okay. Now, sometimes it's good to get a couple additional points. Now, why would that be the case? Because let's suppose you made a mistake on one of your points. Like you're like, you did two points and you have a point here 
and a point, like say right here, and you graphed it, but you actually uh, calculated the wrong point. If you did three or four points, you know, basically what you should see is all the, you know, um, all the order uh, pairs, all the coordinates here lining up to form a line. But let's say you did five points, one, two, three, four, five, and your fifth point was like way over here, right? You're like, hey, wait a minute, this doesn't make sense. I was getting a nice line here, but now I got to do a detour. Well, probably what happened, not probably, 99% uh, the time, you made a mistake with this calculation. So redo this calculation, you'll say, oh, there it is right there, I made a mistake, and everything lines up. Okay, so I hope this video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, if you need additional help in algebra, check out these courses right here. So pre-algebra is uh, for those of you that are studying basic algebra. But uh, if you are further along in mathematics, then you may want to check out my Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 courses. Now, my Math Skills Rebuilder course is a review course. I cover basic math algebra and geometry in this course i'm going to leave links to all these courses in the description of this video all right so with all that being said i definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures thank you for your time and have a great day